In this video, we're talking about the differences between scalar and vector quantities. It's very important to know a few differences between a scalar and a vector quantity because you might be asked this in your examination. Now, I've already said that um, a scalar quantity has only magnitude, it does not have direction, and a vector quantity has both magnitude and direction. You know the examples I've stated already. One example of scalar quantity is uh, the height of a body, the length of a body, the mass of a body. These are all scalar quantities. And a vector quantity includes velocity, displacement, and force. Now let's start by looking at the nature. Every scalar quantity is one-dimensional. That is to say you cannot resolve a scalar quantity into two different directions. The length of a body is measured along one direction. That is one dimensional, but a vector can be one dimensional, can be two dimensional or three. For example, if you have a force vector f, a force vector f acting in this direction, let's place an angle theta here. Now, this force vector can be resolved into a component along the x axis, that is, can be resolved along the x axis and can also be resolved along the y axis. So it must be three-dimensional in the sense that uh, if you have this vector, let's say vector A, this vector A can have components in, you know, x axis, it can have along y axis, it can have along the z axis. So there are two directions, x, y, and z. So see that uh, this vector is, um, you know, one-dimensional, two-dimensional, resolved along x and y, and can be three-dimensional resolved along x, y, and z axis. Okay, the second parameter is change. In terms of change, what's the difference between a vector and a scalar? Now, a scalar changes only with change in their magnitude. When the magnitude of the scalar quantity changes, it means the scalar quantity has changed. When it comes to vectors, a change in the vector quantities is possible when the magnitude changes or when the direction changes or when both magnitude and direction changes. Take for instance, you have a body moving along a straight line. Here, the direction of the body is maintained. Okay, so let's see this body at point A. The speed of this body is 5 meters per second at point A. And after a time t second later, the body is now at point B. And then the speed has changed to, let's say, 7 or 8 meters per second. So a change in speed along a straight line means that the velocity of this body has changed. You know? So velocity is a vector. So this one, the magnitude only changes. That shows the vector velocity has changed. Or when it involves a body moving in a circle, let's say at a point A here, the body is moving at a speed of 5 meters per second. When the body moves in a circle, the direction of this body at any time is along the tangent. Along the tangent. So you can see that um, at this time, the body is at point A, the speed is 5. After another time T, or some second later, the body is at point B. The direction of motion is still along the tangent at B. Let's say the speed is kept constant at 5 meters per second. So this body is moving in this direction around the circle. So you can see that the direction of motion at point A is different from the direction of motion at point B. That means since the direction is changing, this vector is changing. The velocity is changing. Though the magnitude is constant, the magnitude of the velocity is 5. It's constant. But because its direction is changing, it means that um, the velocity of the body is changing. But for scalar, if the mass of a body changes from 5 kilogram to 10 kilogram, well, since only the magnitude has changed, it means that the scalar quantity has changed. Number three is resolution. Now, it's uh, a scalar quantity cannot be resolved as it has the same value irrespective of the direction. Regardless of the direction, a scalar quantity has the same value, and so it cannot be resolved. 
but a vector quantity on the other hand can be resolved in any direction we can use the sine or the cosine of the angle the vector makes with uh, the x axis to resolve that vector quantity into two or three or more components right? so in my one of my videos i took time to explain the resolution of a vector so okay, that's the third difference between the scalar and a vector okay the fourth one is um, operations operations any mathematical operation carried out among two or more scalar quantities will give a scalar as a result for instance if you have to add two lengths together you have to find the perimeter of a body or the perimeter of a shape let's say length of the shape is five uh, centimeters and the width is three cm so if i'm to find the perimeter i'm going to do some addition here you recall the formula two times length plus breadth or width so that gives me two times uh, five plus three that gives me two times eight that gives me 16. now since i added these two scalar quantities to get my perimeter it therefore follows that the perimeter of this shape is also a scalar so when you add two scalar quantities you multiply two scalar quantities you divide two scalar quantities the result is a scalar however if a scalar quantity is multiplied with a vector the result is a vector i take it again however if a scalar quantity is separated with a vector let's say you multiply a scalar and a vector together or sometimes you can even divide a vector by a scalar the result is a vector for instance the expression for the force acting on the body force f recall is given by the product of mass and acceleration now the product of these two quantities gives force f mass is a scalar quantity but acceleration is vector you see so by by multiplying a scalar and a vector that gives a vector quantity or you multiply to calculate uh, or to write down the expression the equation for momentum of a body is the product of its mass and its velocity momentum is vector though to get momentum we have to multiply a scalar and a vector so since this is a vector multiplied by a scalar the result which is momentum is a vector and so on and so forth so most times or there about when a scalar and a vector operates together the result is a vector now for vectors mathematical operations carried out between two or more vectors may give either a scalar or a vector quantity okay so for instance now uh, i don't know if i've heard about the dots products of two vectors this is a vector this is another vector their dots product is always a scalar to give you a scalar um a result so whenever you have this dot product of two vectors the result is a scalar okay then the cross product of two vectors the result is a vector okay so that's for vector quantities so mathematical operation like dot products of two vectors will give a scalar as the result and the cross product of two vectors will give a vector quantity okay so that's number four and then number five in terms of um, the expression let's talk about the expression expression now for scalar the scalar quantity is expressed when it comes to notation it is denoted by a single alphabet it is donated it is denoted by a single letter or alphabet for instance the mass of a body m is represented by the symbol m if a light a font let's say it is 50 kilogram so the symbol we use for expressing a scalar quantity is just a single letter i want to maybe express the symbol of length i can just use a single letter l to express uh, the length of a body 
But for a vector, we can use a bold faced letter. A bold faced letter that is um, to represent a vector quantity. An example, a vector force F. We use this to denote it. And then also, we can write a, the letter of the light font, but with an arrow head on it to also represent a vector quantity. Okay, so these are the uh, differences between a vector and a scalar quantity.